ATP is a cell's energy. So we're going to figure out how ATP is involved in muscle contraction. We have the cycle. We can start anywhere, but let's start right here at step three. It really doesn't matter where we start, but this is a good place to start. So here's your myosin head. It wants to bind to the actin binding sites, and it can because they're exposed. Tropomyosin's out of the way. So ATP will bind to the myosin head. Look at the angle of the myosin head here from its arm. Right, so ATP is then split into ADP from triphosphate to diphosphate. So there's the other phosphate. And now the energy that was in ATP gets transferred to the myosin head. So look at the angle of it here versus the angle of it here. Now it's cocked and ready to produce the power stroke. So the myosin head has the potential energy in it now that it got from ATP, and it looks up and sees, oh, the binding sites are exposed, so it binds to it. And when it binds to it, now it produces the power stroke. Look at the angle versus the angle. So what did it do? It just, you can see the arrows, it just slid actin towards the center of the sarcomere. So that energy from ATP went into the myosin head, and then the myosin head transferred that energy by moving or sliding actin towards the center of the sarcomere. When that happens, that ADP and the P fly off the myosin head. Now the myosin head cannot release. It's unable to release until ATP binds to it. So when ATP binds to the myosin head, you can see a little arrow right here, that's what releases it from actin. So that cross bridge is broken when ATP binds. So energy from ATP then goes to the myosin head. If the sites are still exposed, we'll, join, we'll form a cross bridge and produce the power stroke, right? And the cycle just keeps happening. So the important point of this slide is, yes, not only is ATP required because it's the energy required to produce a muscle contraction, but it also releases the myosin head from actin, which means without ATP, you wouldn't be able to uncontract or relax your muscles. They would just be stiff because you wouldn't be able to, to uh, release the, the contraction. And I could just go through this quickly here. How do we get our ATP in our body? Well, when ATP is used up to ADP, we have something called creatine phosphate that gives up its phosphate in order to produce the ATP again. This is just a real quick way to, to take that P that was removed from ATP and put it to ADP to give us ATP. Um, it's just creatine phosphate donating or transferring its phosphate to ADP in order to produce ATP. Another way we can produce ATP is without oxygen. Uh, this is just if we need some quick energy. Um, it happens in the cytoplasm in a process called glycolysis, where glucose is broken down into these molecules called pyruvate, and we get a couple ATPs out of it. Uh, this is a, a process uh, called anaerobic respiration. Aerobic means with oxygen. Anaerobic has to do with without oxygen. Um, so some of our ATP is produced this way, but if we need a lot of ATP, we go into aerobic respiration or the aerobic pathway. This is where the mitochondria comes in. We know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell that produces most of the cell's ATP. Well, we take this byproduct of glycolysis, which is pyruvate, put it into the mitochondria with oxygen, and you get a whole bunch. It says 32 plus ATP is produced that way. So with aer this aerobic pathway, it takes a little while to produce the ATP, but once it does, it produces quite a bit. So this is better for endurance, where glycolysis would be used for quick spurts of energy. We'll end this video with a few different types of contractions. An isotonic contraction is when there is movement, like shown here in this image. So here's our bicep muscle in this example, 
and it contracts. So that means the tension is the same throughout the movement, and that's what isotonic means, same tension. Of course, if the muscle shortens, it's concentric. If it's relaxing, I shouldn't say relaxing, but stretching, meaning the weight is still in the arm, but we're moving it in the opposite direction, that's called an eccentric contraction. So those are isotonic contractions. But what if there's no movement, if you're just holding the weight like this? Um, the muscle's still contracted, but we call that isometric because the muscle, although it's contracted, stays the same length. 